Today we're going to talk about differential cooling. We drive our Genesis coupes extremely hard. We've won a lot of championships and if you don't keep your temperatures in check you will have a lot of reliability issues. We've seen temperatures spike to as high as 270, 280 degrees within a matter of 15-20 minutes. Um, so it's important to have coolers on board and monitor everything. Uh, what do you need to do this? Well, number one, you need a pump, you need a cooler, and you need lines to hook everything up. It's not that hard, it's quite simple, and uh, today we're going to show you how we did it on our Genesis Coupe. Uh, so let's get started and show you how we did it on our car so you can do the same on almost any uh, car you have out there. So whenever you start a project, it's really important to plan your system out. Uh, we chose to go from the differential to the cooler, to the pump, then back to the diff. And this is in keeping with uh, Tilton's instructions that it's better to plummet this way to keep the pump as cool as possible to make it live as long, long as possible. Uh, so that's how we plumbed it. And then of course we went with uh, the 40-524 pump. It flows at two gallons per minute. It uh, pressurizes at 60 PSI max. And it's a 12 volt, really simple. Uh, and it's good for, it's made for this. So it's actually fits our uses perfectly. It is not a 100% a, a, um, duty cycle pump. So it's not meant for long time to be left on and pump. It does need time to shut off, to cool down. Uh, but that time is usually about an hour or so. So um, in a half hour race, uh, no problem. It comes in a nice small package. Uh, the 4524 comes with basically everything you need right out of the box. Um, you just need to add fittings and uh, wire it up. And it's really small and light and you can tuck it in anywhere and it'll fit really easily. It comes with perfect instructions, although it's really simple, just in, out, power on ground, then you're pretty much good to go. You just need to, and it's also self-priming, which really helps with the system, which also chose a set wrap small uh, cooler with the fan built in to go along with it. You will of course need some hoses. We chose the Fregola stuff because that's what we use on all the race cars. It works great. We chose the premium nylon race hose and the ProFlow hose adapters. Um, got a bunch of different, uh, they have everything you need, 90s, 180s, 120s, whatever you want. Um, next, you need to figure out how to uh, plumb it into your diff. So we chose the fill plug on the standard Genesis diff. Um, it's a 16 millimeter thread, so, and it uses, it's important to get this right size fitting that fits in there, and also the kind that uses a crush washer, not an O-ring. Uh, so that's what we got, and we screwed it in, so it's nice and tight and won't leak. Uh, so that part was easy, and then we went to the next step, which is uh, installing everything up. The 4524, again, really easy, simple, lightweight, and uh, it comes with 3 8 NPT uh, fittings. So we went to Fergola once again, got these dash 10 to 3 8 NPT fittings. You'll see the part number on the screen. And uh, remember, when you do the dash uh, 10, anything that you use NPT, you do have to use um, the thread sealant on the threads. Of course, we're, this is just showing how they have to make sure that they thread on right. Just wanted to piece things, everything together before we actually uh, put everything, mount everything up. And they fit every, actually perfectly. And then we could rig up the system to see where we're going to put everything uh, on the car. The cooler uses 22 millimeter fittings, which do not come with uh, the, the oil cooler itself, but Setrap sells them separately. So we just got the ones that they sell. They are an O-ring kind. Um, so you really, when you're doing this kind of work, you have to really pay attention uh, to make sure with, whether you're using thread sealant, O-ring, crush washer, what system they're using. Um, a lot of times manufacturers don't tell you these things. So you just have to know from experience or talk to somebody who has. But these ones were made by Setrap. They came with the O-ring and they fit right in. So it was easy and they were not too expensive either. So we put these on. Make sure anytime you um, you use O-rings uh, to lube them up a little bit of oil on them. It helps them uh, not rip them up and not destroy them and also not leak. 
Um, so put those on and then uh, you're ready to uh, for the next step in the project. Just being a small lightweight pr uh, uh, cooler, it's really easy to plumb it up and install it. So once you have everything uh, put up, uh, we put a uh, small amount of uh, medium duty Loctite on there, medium strength Loctite on there. Make sure they don't come loose from all the vibration from the pump and the race car and everything. We uh, put, of course, um, on the car itself, we put some uh, rivet nuts to mount these in. Um, you can use rivet nuts, you can use a nut and bolt, but rivet nuts are a lot easier. Never use sheet metal screws, they don't stay long. Um, and then again, as if you're using, anytime you're using NPT fittings, make sure you put some thread sealant on the threads to help seal it. If you don't do this, uh, they will leak and uh, you'll have to come do it all over again and make a mess. So uh, thread sealant is your friend. You can use the tape. Uh, we like the liquid version much better. It's so much easier. You don't have to worry about it. You just put it on and thread it on and uh, you're good to go. So once you've tightened everything and you have your fittings in place, um, make sure that um, now you're ready to make sure that everything is going to plumb right and correctly uh, before you move on to the next step. So the next step for us was to actually install this on the car. As we said, we used rivet nuts to the body of the car. We mounted it where the spare tire under the spare tire carrier. Um, so we uh, mounted it there. Four holes, four riv nuts, uh, six millimeter bolts holding it in place. Um, so really easy and simple. And the, the pump was in place. And we also mounted it so that the lines don't kink and have plenty of room and are also stay away from any heat sources or anything moving around. Straight shot from the pump to the diff, uh, pump, from the pump to the cooler, I'm sorry. So next step is the hard part, I guess, um, is actually mounting your fitting onto your diff cover. So we, for this, we needed a, a one and a half NPT adapter to a dash 10, and we had to mount it to the diff cover of the Genesis. And this is going to be the outlet of the pump, of the cooler that goes, feeds our pump and our cooler. So we already we used the stock fill, but this is where the uh, fluid would come out and go into our cooler and then go into our pump. We shaved off one of the fins uh, to uh, get more clearance. And of course, when you're drilling, you really want to start small and work your way up. It's better not to just use it one giant bit from the get-go. Um, so we worked the way up with small bits and went slowly. This cover is made out of aluminum, so it was pretty easy uh, to mount. Of course, when you're doing this, you want to also make sure where you end up is the correct place. You don't want to end up somewhere weird on the other side. So always check your work before you start drilling uh, because uh, then you end up having to uh, backtrack and maybe even have to get a new cover. Um, so we worked the way up until we may have the right size hole for our half inch NPT uh, fitting. And uh, at that point, we started to, uh, to tap it with a half inch NPT uh, tap. And of course, you just go slowly. Again, the covers, this cover is aluminum, so it was uh, not too hard. And uh, the drill sometimes gets stuck, but you just um, go with it. And, um, and then you uh, work your way slowly until the threads are done. So once you have uh, the fitting uh, threaded, the, uh, put the fitting on, don't forget your uh, your uh, white sealant tape uh, once again put that in uh, tighten everything but of course uh, be careful not to because everything is aluminum you don't want to uh, break anything or damage anything so make sure you uh, tighten stuff but not too tight um, and then you'll be uh, fine these uh, mpt fittings usually don't leak very much if you do it right so you don't have to have them super tight uh, but we also wanted to make sure on the other side that it doesn't stick out or anything. You don't want it sticking out way so much that it affects the flow on the inside of the diff or hits, um, hits the gears or something like that. We also put in another hole on the other side, uh, or this time a 1.8 MPT fitting for a temp gauge. 
because it's important to have a temp gauge so you know what's going on in there so you can turn the pump on and off so we did the same thing on the on the other side of the bottom of the of the diff cover remember the top part does not it only gets splashes the bottom part is where all oil is sitting so you want to be on the bottom part as much as possible to get the maximum uh, uh, exposure once we were done uh, the pump uh, lined up perfectly with the cooler so you can get a nice short piece of hose in a straight shot and uh, everything fit right under the car away from anything uh, bad that could uh, puncture things or damage things so uh, you'll see the that's the pump uh, that's the diff outlet right there uh, on your uh, top of your screen and that is the inlet uh, right there which is the stock inlet so from the outlet uh, we went uh, straight to the cooler and that line and there is our uh, temp sensor so if you follow the line from the outlet of the diff it would uh, go all the way avoiding anything spinning or hot or the exhaust or anything into the cooler from the cooler it would go straight shot into the pump the pumps is self-priming so you don't have to worry about it there then from the pump the pump flows it back we went over the subframe over the axle back to the diff itself uh, to complete the process uh, the system didn't take very long of course we just had to wire it up with a switch and a relay and uh, the system uh, works perfectly and we tried it at the at the first race and uh, worked beautifully with uh, no issues and kept the temperatures in check so really happy with the system, similar system we have in our other cars. And if you have any other questions, uh, please let us know in the comments. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for checking.